Hey there, I'm Migs of the Mox, and you are watching the Chana 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 podcast. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of my podcast. Uh, we have a very special guest today joining all the way from Manila. We got members of the Mox joining the podcast. Hi Mix, hi Rafael. Yeah, rock on man. So so I, I think this is the first uh, Chana 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 podcast we are doing a carpool <laughs> carpool kind of thing. <laughs> I'm sorry we, because uh, we 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 had a gig last night and everybody has prior commitments to this day and we weren't sure what time we'd be able to show up collectively. So <laughs> so uh, it turns out we're all in the car. <laughs> Right. Uh, so you guys had uh, consecutive gigs Friday and Saturday, right? Yeah. Yes. So, so tell me about these gigs. So right. Uh, last Friday, that was June uh, 10, right? June 10. We were at Millennia PH in uh, Marikina. Uh, we we were part of a, a production by pa uh, Pasig Band Community, and uh, we played uh, four songs there. So it was very nice. It was our first time there. It was a really good place. And uh, last night we were at RJ Bistro in Dusit Thani, Makati, uh, as part of uh, New Vibe PH's uh, Pinoy Indie Project. Uh, that's I think that's the name of the show. And we played five songs. And um, they officially announced as a part of their uh, official gig rosters. So that's an that was an exciting night. Right. So, and I, I actually, I went to Raj, RJ Bisto like a few weeks back and I think that's the only venue right now you can get that old Manila vibe, right? Like a yeah, yeah. real club vibe. It's, it's a very, very uh, classic feel. So, so it's very cool to be able to play there. <laughs> I really enjoy playing different venues and then it was a whole different experience for me yesterday. Right. Uh, w one thing that I noticed, you, you put this post out that I think I think your drummer was sick, so yeah. So your, so he, your other band yeah. members and then your former members they actually help out yeah. to do the gigs. Let, let me tell a short story about it. So uh, we had rehearsals because this gig had been set for like over a month. So we had this gig set for over a month, and we had our practices done. And uh, sad to say, our accidents happen. It's inevitable. Uh, our drummer got into a very minor motorcycle accident i think he fell off so we were able to practice a few days after his accident <laughs> but i think i think it got worse just a few days before i think around two days before the gig he told us oh uh i couldn't walk so i said oh, oh dude you should try painkillers for a bit but if it's not uh you should you should just rest so uh, i scrambled the day before and I reached out to my uh, other band. I uh, will get to that later in the show. So he, I asked him to play guitar because Raf, who is on uh, with us in, on this call, is uh, had prior commitments as well. Right. And I was scrambling. I was trying to reach out to our drummer, but he couldn't commit because it was also a weekday. So what I did was I reached out to my uh, my former drummer, Mr. Enzo Tanis. Uh, shout out to my old guy there. Um, and luckily he was available for, fr uh, for Saturday. Now my big problem was Friday. So what we did was we shuffled the roster. My other git guitarist is, uh, James Relativo. He's also a drummer. He's a sessionist drummer for a lot of other bands. I do not know which bands he sessioned. Right. In. So I said, oh, oh man, let's just shuffle. I'll call my guitarist from Magineric and, uh, you do play the drums for this gig alone and and it worked out fine surprisingly <laughs> we were able to to not cancel and then do our best job <clears throat> yeah because i can imagine like playing a gig after the pandemic that's that's like you can't yeah. you have to do it right <laughs> yeah it's, it's so hard to say no nowadays and then especially for us because we're just getting momentum back so uh the last time we played a gig prior to the pandemic was a 2020 i think february mm. and then we were slowly building our momentum back then and then the pandemic hit so so uh we started playing again this year by february or march i think 
So to regain that momentum and just lose it is very scary. So I, I, I tried to find a way to, to really do the gigs. My, right. my, uh, I, was, I was thinking if, if I wasn't able to find a drummer, uh, we would have done an Eagle-style acoustic gig, like three guitarists and no drums. Right. 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 Uh, <clears throat> so, so Mig, how was this last two years? Because nobody really wanted to talk about the last two years because it's like, you know, it's a lot of terrible era like in our lives. But, but how did that really affect you, you personally and, and the band? Okay, here's, here's another... Uh, I'd say this is a good story. So we formed it in 2019. The Mox did 2019 and 2020. So we were a fairly new roster to uh, gigging. And the pandemic hit. So, so we were, uh, I think it was March when we recorded our EP, the Garaje one. Again, we'll get to that later. But um, so it, it felt kind of weird being able to start playing again. And then oh damn so everything is closed uh i i think the day that the borders closed we were scheduled to have a gig in uh i forgot the venue but it's in Kobao. and 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 we were really planning to go to to the gig because ba back then the announcement was uh oh we'll just close the borders and nobody really believed that people would close the borders right so fast forward to that it, it kind of came into a thing where we were questioning if we really wanted to stay in a band because uh, we were only together for like a year and then it was on a lockdown. And, uh, and that's the reason why we have a former drummer, by the way, <laughs> because uh, our drummer, uh, our former drummer, Mr. Enzo Tanyas, uh, he lives in Cavite. So he's very far from us. I'm right. from Marikina. Uh, James, our other guitarist, is from Marikina. So the distance problem is, is, uh, is quite a lot. So we were kind of on a hiatus. I think everybody was on a hiatus back then. And, and I, I, I just bought a few of uh, my equipment at home. Uh, I think I had a Focusrite and a few guitars in my apartment when, uh, when the pandemic hit. And everybody was on a downer mood. Our drummer was stressed that the pandemic hit. Our guitarist is, is a, he's a newspaper guy. So he's always on call. So we, were, we weren't working back then. So I, I had to focus on music alone. And with all my equipment, I, I focus on, on my stuff. So I told them, guys, if we're not going to do band stuff, I'll work on my solo stuff for the meantime. Mm. And, and that's what I did. I did a lot of uh, solo recordings back then, and we were able to we were able to produce the Garaje EP because it was a lot of leftover recordings from 2019 and 2020. So I worked on that, learning the craft, learning to record. We're we're a home produced uh, recording, by the way. So uh, it's a lot of uh, stuff we learned during the pandemic that that helped us uh, cope with it. <clears throat> right. So, 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 Mig, Mig. Uh, so, the current lineup. Uh, so, you're doing bass and vocals. Who, who are the others? Right. So, okay. Uh, so, uh, from the original members, let me tell you about myself. I'm Mig Zliado. I'm the bassist. I do vocals. I write and uh, produce the songs. Uh, our lead guitarist and original member also, James Relativo. He's a uh, he's he's a journalist slash referee for MWF. So, right. Uh, right, he's he's a wrestling guy as well. Um, so our former drummer Enzo Tanyas, no, I'll, I'll give him a shout out again because I love the guy for for helping us out this weekend. Uh, he's he was with us for 2019 up to 2021. Uh, when he re he semi retired because he couldn't really. Uh, when we were planning gigs back in 2021. He couldn't really commit to it anymore because the pandemic and he's, he's the older, I'm, I'm not going to say his age because he might kill me, but uh, <laughs> he's the older guy in the group. So he, he couldn't commit to a touring sched. So we, we kind of said, oh, if we want this band to, to continue, let's, let's find new people to work with us. And Enzo was really a sport about it. He, he said, oh, I'll support you guys. You can keep some of the songs that I wrote. And, uh, <laughs> 
So that's where I found uh, Raf Orga. He's my uh, wife's cousin. And he's relatively new to the music scene, by the way. It's his first band ever. So uh, it, it's a good experience for him. And also, I, I reached out to uh, my former office mate who used to drum with me at the office. We had this small office band that, uh, that we play with during Christmas and uh, special events in the office, Justin Casilang. He's hmm. kind of a, a veteran also of the scene. He played for Dottie's World before and a few other sessionist uh, gigs before. So that's how we ended up with the lineup of James, myself, Raf, and uh, Justin. So that's the current lineup of the mocks right now. Right. So, so Mig, uh, <clears throat> before we talk about the band and the music, can you tell me a little bit about your childhood and what's your earliest uh, memory of music? Right. So, so uh, I think I was born into a musical family. My mom was uh, the 12th kid out of, uh, it's a big family. She's the youngest of 12 kids. And I think half of our, maybe those 12 kids play some sort of music instrument, more on piano, more of guitars. So it wasn't really something foreign to me. Uh, I remember my earliest memory of playing music. My, my parents enrolled me in Yamaha. Uh, I think piano lessons. But when you're a four or five-year-old kid, you don't really enjoy those things because they ask you to play like classical stuff like Moon River and uh, a lot of old stuff. So I wasn't appreciative of it. And uh, what happened was, because a lot of our relatives were, were piano players, my... My parents decided to grab uh, a keyboard, so some synths at home. And, and as a young child, you explore. And I, I think I was, I, I don't want to lift myself up, but I, I think I had the gift of uh, ear. Uh, I can play by ear. So I played with the synth at home, even without me, anybody teaching me. And I kind of picked it up. So eventually they, they had me enroll for more contemporary lessons, playing some fun uh, novelty songs like uh, Volt the Voltus 5 theme, Star Wars, something more up for a kid's alley. And I think I learned a lot more than when I did uh, study in Yamaha. And uh, it was a fun experience, but uh, it wasn't really my thing, even if I enjoyed playing since. Because uh, I'm, I'm a 90s kid, by the way, so I grew up in the 90s. I'm, I'm, th I'm 35 right now. I'm 34 turning 35 right now. So my, my genre is more of the grunge era, the alternative rock. You got your Oasis, you got your uh, bands like uh, Garbage, uh, Nirvana. So it was inevitable for me to pick up the guitar. And uh, come high school, I know a lot of my classmates uh, played guitar. They would bring guitars at, at school. And I'd, I'd play a few songs. I, I'd try to watch them and learn. So eventually, I transitioned from being a synth player to uh, to, to a guitar player. Right. <clears throat> I'm not sure if Rafael can talk. Uh, Raf, can you talk right uh, now? Yep, I can talk right now. The road is pretty straight. Yeah. So, so, so Rafael, mm. what's your what's your earliest uh, memory of music? Uh, it was probably when I was in elementary, back in grade six. So. It was the time when the Magbalik intro, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but uh, it was uh, pretty famous at that time. So uh, in our school, you were considered cool if you could play that intro, which was pretty basic, by the way. Yeah, so from my friends, I picked up the guitar. Yeah, and then um, we had a family friend who played guitar well. So we had him teach me uh, the basic chords in the guitar. And then that's that was in an acoustic guitar. And then after that, um, I remember in high school, I think it was in first year high school, um, I remember that I was just scrolling through YouTube in the summer, and then I happened to chance upon Sweet Child of Mine by Guns N' Roses, and then I said I wanted to learn electric guitar, and then from there, I, I asked my parents to buy me an electric guitar, and then um, after that, I pretty much learned from YouTube everything that I know from the electric guitar. Uh, and then after that, my major influences are Guns N' Roses and My Chemical Romance. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Uh, <clears throat> so, so Mig, uh, 
so i mean learning the like having that influence from the family and you know all that and then that background but how did you like actually became a musician what was that uh, like you know getting into the scene okay so the real thing about it is and, and a lot of people would say this but the only play uh, the only time you will ever join the band is for girls right <laughs> I, i know a lot of people won't admit it but it's always for the girls because girls love musicians and and this is a true story so when i was in high school we formed the band we used to cover a lot of deftones and uh and uh cold chamber and pod i think so the girls would say oh you know they're a band they're cool ang guapo naman they're so handsome and and i got into that scene mm. but uh, professionally it was more of me getting tired of playing alone Because cause it really feels different once you're you're in a, an actual band. Like, it's one thing to be able to play on your own uh, as an acoustic act. But once you get into the, the gig scene, uh, it's, it's a whole different thing. So, uh, as part of the Mox, I think this was my first commercial band. Because mostly my bands used to be like for school, for the office, mm. uh, for, for, or, for orgs. So uh, our former drummer Enzo reached out to me. He had a few compositions lying around. So he wanted to, he, he's a veteran of the band scene as well. I think he's had like five, six bands. And then they used to play in the early, uh, in the late 90s, mid, uh, early 2000s. So he wanted to relive his glory days one more time. He's, he's in his uh, 40s, by the way, right now. So he wanted to relive his glory days. He asked me, oh, guys, He, he, call, he called me and James. He said, guys, we, we're people in the wrestling scene. Uh, by the way, I am a writer for Smart Henry. So, so uh, that's how we met Enzo. Um, Enzo called me up. Enzo called James up. And there was this other guy that we contacted from, uh, I think, from the uh, Philippine music scene. I, I don't know what happened to him. We met him once, but he never came back. Um We, we Enzo reached out to us and told us, oh, let's form a band, let's play some of my songs, and then we'll see if we can do the gigs. And I think it was around June 2019 when we started practicing, and I told Enzo by the time, I think it was October, I think we're ready, guy. I think we're ready, dude. Let's start playing gigs, because we're not going to get any better and any experience playing the rehearsal studios anymore. It's time to just jump in and and rock on right <clears throat> but you you guys uh, uh before that i want to say something now when you reach out to me mix like the one thing i wanted to talk to you because i saw this pic that picture that you sent me one of the pictures you were actually wearing a macho man t-shirt right yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah man So, I, I, this I'm one, already... this guy, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Because I, I, me and actually my son, we, we are big wrestling fans and we, yeah. we go to a lot of shows. Uh, so that's, that's, that's why I actually said, okay, this, this guy's probably, a, I should talk to them. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, that's, that's also the thing. You know, when, when I reached out to you, I said, oh, I think I've seen this guy in maybe a PWR show. Right. I, I I'm familiar with this guy. I've seen you around, though I I know we haven't interacted before, but I've seen you around. So oh, this is a perfect fit. A wrestling fan, a music fan, and we're a wrestling band and a music band. <laughs> so it's it's a match made in heaven, man. Right. <clears throat> so you uh you, you recognize the mocks as a garage band. Uh, yes. So, uh, when I hear the term garage band. I I think of the 60s 70s like you yes. know the early yes. early actually the early punk scene it's called yes. garage band right so yes. but yeah. but how 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 is it different the mocks how how is mocks different from that okay so when we started out it again as i mentioned our our former drummer is around the 40s so so his uh, influences were like 60s 70s uh, garage rock from from the thing itself And uh, and me and James were we were in our 20s, 30s. We're a, a lot younger than him, and we said, "Man, I love garage rock, but but man, it's not gonna fly nowadays." 
because because it, it's a very niche genre and he admits it it's a very niche genre and i said because my influences are a lot of alternative ones so i love the foo fighters i love nirvana uh, i love pearl jam of course from the modern ones i love green day and garage rock is a mix of things because at some point even nirvana had garage garage tracks and uh and a lot of the grunge scene were into garage rock mm. so i told enzo that oh we can make something modern and james influences are even uh, far off from the garage ones because he's in the emo scene he's is into math math rock he's into a lot of um, modern rock so just the blend of everything when we started out enzo would send us these demos made from garage band and it's it's not a fun on the garage rock thing but he really made demos from garage band mm. and he'd send us the demos and and we'd try to try to add more stuff to it so we'd we'd add more guitars we'd add more modern riffs to it and when we jam we'd tell him dude by this point it's not really just garage anymore there's some grunge influences there's some uh, alternative influences i think you can hear a lot of it from from the song pb the nirvana influences um from troll i think there's a lot of rock and roll influences it you can hear a lot of like maybe a little of guns and roses there and and it's it's a total mix of styles that that eventually evolved from just garage rock into a whole different level and and it's a whole different thing right now right <clears throat> so so rafael i think you kind you're a bit like younger compared to the other members right so you probably uh, like hearing nirvana and and grunge how is that how we, how are you like getting into that sort of music and you know getting aligned with the band i think that's ah. <laughs> i think he got stuck i think he got <laughs> got stuck but uh I'll help you. I'll help him answer that question. Um, surprisingly, that's one of the reasons I got him in the band because mm. he's in his twenty. I think he's twenty five right now. So I would have expected his influences would be some younger sure. band. Uh, I'm pretty much connected with the CGC. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Raf, we can hear you. Uh, Are you there? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. my internet connection is unstable on the Oh, it's fine. It's fine. I'll I'll help you answer the question. <laughs> so, so yeah, okay. so one one of the reasons I got Raf to join the band was uh, I I noticed that his influences were way different. By the way, he has a brother who plays the drums, and and again, uh, his brother's influences are more up to his age than him. So I was surprised to hear that he he was a big fan of Guns and Roses. So that's an eighties nineties rock band. Mm -hmm. So so. I I think by by music age he fits well into the band. Right, right. <clears throat> so, uh I want to talk about I actually listen to some of the music uh of the mock and I want to ask about this song. Uh there's a song called Troll. I think it was right. released in last year. And yes. uh I think it's very relevant uh you know especially like last few years the trolling yes. the word troll is has so many different uh, you know meanings so what's the what's the reason behind that song and actually naming that as troll okay so uh, the thing about that song it's actually about a very specific situation that our drummer got into <laughs> it's it's actually surprisingly it's actually about love right <laughs> right so he got into this date with somebody i think he matched on maybe bumble or tinder I forgot but he did tell us the story before. And so the 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 story goes as he had a date with somebody. They went out. Uh they had fun and and they they were hitting it off well during the date. And then towards the end of the date it's it started to go down south and then uh I think the girl told him after the date that she wasn't interested and that I think he was told he was I, I don't remember what what negative words were were told but basically I think the the girl he dated trash talked him mm -hmm. after or or during 
before the end of the date. So so when Ender wrote it, he, his thought was, oh, why did we have to finish the date before you told me you weren't interested? Like, right. you, 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 you're, you feel, it feels like you're trolling me. Like, oh, let's go out. Let's eat out. I'll, I'll, I'll go out with you, but I'm not interested. <laughs> and that's how the whole story of, of the song came about. Right. Right. If you hear the, the lines from the chorus, right? Like, if you don't like me, then what the hell's your business here? Right. Yeah, right. So, <laughs> if you hate me, why did you spend time with me? So, it's right. a lot of that. But yeah, I, I get the relevance of, of the thing because it is true. There are a lot of people right now that, that would, would spend time with you only because they need something from you. And it's a bit trolly in, in that nature. And then, yeah, I, I see the relevance. Right. <clears throat> so, uh, you 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 have the latest your latest song called E T E T two E T two. It's it's uh it's pronounced as et two. Et two. Right. So, can you tell me the story behind that sure. song as well? All right. So, uh, since you're a wrestling fan, uh, it, it's about wrestling in 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 general. So there was this one guy from the internet. He's a big wrestling fan. His name is uh, Adam Pachiri. If I if I if I remember the name right, he's from what culture? If I remember correctly, and to be honest, he's one of those uh, bigger named celebrities from the YouTube scene. He does reviews of wrestling shows. He he's the one who who used to host the show uh, Fantasy Booking. I forgot what it was called, but uh, but he used to book fantasy storylines for wrestling. Right. Thing is, we used to look up to this guy because he's a really cool guy. He was fun. And then remember when the Me Too movement came out and everybody was like, oh, that guy's a sexual harasser. That right. guy's a sexual harasser. And it was surprising to see someone so not that famous, but also someone we were, we were thinking that was cool to be outed as a sexual harasser as well. So that was that was the thing about etu. Uh, by the way, etu, which translates to end you in Latin. So, so we were surprised to see that. Oh, you as well. You're you're another crazy guy, and that's the whole gist of the the song. Uh, it's about me. Uh, it's about learning about your idols and your heroes, and feeling disappointed that they did some crazy stuff. And and learning about their uh, devi- deviations and their all their uh, chaotic natures. Right. I mean, I I I think it's uh, it's human nature, right? Because I think we need to understand that even though these celebrities or, or whoever we idolize, they are also human, right? So they have yes. the basic, you know, like jealousy, yes. anger, yes. and all these things. So, exactly. So they are envious sometimes. So all that is yes, there. Yes. So I, I, I don't think we should expect them yeah. to like, you know. It's just surprising that people put uh, a lot of these celebrities on pedestals mm. and then get shocked when they get involved in a scandal or two. Right, yeah. It's, uh... <laughs> now that you talk about wrestling mix, tell me a little bit about, you know, the your early memories of like wrestling. Right. So when I was young, in, in the early 90s, we used to have VHS tapes, Betamax tapes, if you're familiar right. with those kinds of things. Uh, I, I think there used to be a video store uh, down the street. We would rent out Royal Rumble. I, I remember some of my, my earliest memories were Hulk Hogan, of course. Um, yeah. The Macho Man. Of course, I'm a big fan of the Macho Man. Uh, Million Dollar Man. Watching superstars on TV. Um, I remember being a fan of of uh, the Rockers, of course, who doesn't like Shawn Michaels, because me, I have I have a brother, by the way, and we used to collect a lot of action figures. Right. Uh, of one of I I I forgot the brand, but uh, it's one of those uh the the ones with the action, the clothesline action action figures. So we'd buy those. We're really big wrestling fans, and uh, yeah, I think I did not outgrow it. Eventually, when the Attitude Era came in, you know, everybody was like, oh, suck it, suck it, 
and, no, and because we were we were immature kids in our puberty, and it was so cool to tell everybody to suck it, and and that was the rise of the rock, the rise of uh, Triple H, Stone Cold, and a lot of our famous celebrities nowadays, and uh, I think. There was a brief time where I stopped watching wrestling. I think it was during the early 2000s, during the right. invasion era, where WCW folded, folded, and uh, we kind of lost our our uh, our uh, wrestling shows in the Philippines. It was uh, gone for a bit, but I think the ruthless aggr- uh, aggression era was was one of the best again. So I, I remember when John Cena turned out to be the rapper. That was one of the big high moments where I came back into wrestling. Mm. And eventually it, it carried on. And uh, again, discovering, eventually discovering uh, Philippine wrestling in around 2017, 2018. And uh, meeting all these people like, uh, shout out to my good friends, Mr. C. And uh, Sandata, Mr. Romeo Moran. Right. Shout out to the people from Smart Henry, by the way, who I, uh, who I'm, uh, which I'm a part of. No, they got me, I think, at mi- uh, mid-2018 uh, to, to write about, uh, at that time, I was writing about fa- wrestling fashion. And eventually, I, I turned into the guy who, who uh, attended the meet and greets. I was able to interview Seamus. Uh, well, right. not interview Seamus one-on-one, but uh, in a group pa- panel. I was there when KO and uh, Ali was here. So we were able to get uh, statements from them. So I, I turned into that guy who covered uh, foreign visitors. And, and I think that's why wrestling never really died for me. Mm. And then nowadays, it's just so easy to get merch. It's so easy to get toys. Right. Because when, when, we were, when we were young, we didn't have the money to get toys or it wasn't really available locally. Right. So... I think that's why, why we never lost the love for wrestling. And and again, as I mentioned, James Relativo, our guitarist, is a referee for MWF. He's an actual. <laughs> he is an actual performer for MWF. Right. <clears throat> so I I actually have a similar similar experience as you said. And and uh, I think in the early two thousands or mid two thousands, I actually right. lost the interest. But right. but I got it back because my son son got interested of wrestling and then right. he, he's the one who actually like reintroduced me but now when i see all these all wrestlers i i i, I kind of have a very strong emotional yeah thing that when i see them like Shawn michaels when when yeah. undertaker was like in hall of fame yeah. i was like you know it's very emotional to me and, right. and but i i i also like because we went to all the like most of the PWR shows, I go with my son, and that that's right. like our like a bonding thing. And then luckily in W in 2019, we went to WWE in Singapore. So yeah, right. that was like, I think for him it was like the greatest experience for him, like because it's it's so amazing, right? It's Man, r- wrestling is a lost art. People think it's just some crazy. You know, that's one of our songs, by the way, wrestling. Uh, People think it's some crazy thing that we enjoy. It's a childish thing that we enjoy. But Mm. to be honest, wrestling is a really wonderful show. It's a wonderful spectacle. You know, it's uh, people say it's this uh, male soap opera. And it's true. You you get to watch people beat each other up. You 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 get uh, you get feelings of highs and lows. You, You feel every emotion with the stories. Right. So it's really a fun thing. Yeah, the, the, the most fun thing for me is like the betrayal. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and nowadays, it's so difficult to, to hide those things because right. with the internet spoiling it. So anytime you see like an out of nowhere betrayal, like, oh, what the, right? <laughs> and, and that's good to feel that way. <laughs> Right. So, so Mig, so you, you're actually quite busy. So you're not just doing the mocks. You also have another band, right? So tell me about yes. that band. Okay. So I, I mentioned a while ago that uh, the mocks went into uh, a short hiatus for about a year. So I, I reached out to the music community locally 
and uh, we were able to start this small thing called the New Pinoy Music Collective. It's basically a support system for out-of-place musicians. Like, if you're learning to do music, if you want to start releasing your stuff, or if you're just a, a new band that started releasing but don't know where to go, that's uh, what we built. So one of the people that I reached out to when we started this thing was uh, Mr. Kokoy Dulce. Shout out to Mr. Kokoy Dulce as well. Uh, he had a band called Mad Generic which started the uh, pandemic, I think, November 2020. And uh, when they started out, he wanted it to be a solo project. Mm. But he realized, oh, I couldn't do it. So he reached out to one of his good friends, Mr. Luigi Lim, uh, the drummer for Mad Generic right now. And they formed a, a 10-track or nine or, or nine or 10-track uh, album called Narrativo in February 2021. And then uh, that's when I met them. I think I met them around June 2021. And we were talking about, because by that, by that time, I think there were already gigs starting to, people were starting to do uh, small, I don't know if they were illegal gigs, but back then they were having gigs uh, at that time. And uh, Kokoi was uh, having trouble saying that, uh, oh, if we have a gig, I don't think we can do it because there's just the two of us. And, and, here I was missing the gig scene and I told him, dude, my band is on hiatus. Why, do, why not just get me? And that's how I ended up being the third of Mad Generic. We started, uh, we started doing it slowly. Like as a sessionist, I would play bass on the virtual tracks. Mm. And uh, eventually when we got our first gig, I was there. And, and we were the original trio. But uh, the thing about it is uh, because, because I think bands work well when there's more layers to it, we sometimes get Raph to play guitars with us. So most of the time when, when the Mox plays in a, in a gig, you can expect Mad Generic to be there as well because it's mostly made up of the same people. Mm, right. So this is yeah. like Slipknot and <laughs> what's the other Yeah. <laughs> um, Stone Sour. Right. Yeah, right. It's, it's, it's like that. But uh, the difference is when you hear the mocks, it's me shouting out my garage rock, uh, rock and roll stuff. When it's time for Mad Generic, Kokoi brings out all the, the growls and the heavy metal shouting and all the socially responsible songs. Right, right, right. <clears throat> so, so Mig, what's the plan for the band? So now that you know things are opening up and then you know it looks good, looks looks hopeful. So, what's the plan for the band for the near future? Right. So uh, we're currently working on our first album, our first full length. It's basically going to be a re-release of some of the EP songs, uh, addled with uh, some new songs that I wrote. Uh, I think we're targeting a release for uh, late 2022. But there might be some uh, individual releases in between. Oh, by the way, we just released our uh, current, our latest track, Paglaya, which is about uh, June 12, Freedom, Independence Day. So you can check it out. It's part of the Libertad album. Uh, it's a collective album of uh, musicians writing about freedom. So that's one of the projects we worked on our new song, Paglaya. I think we're doing a lot more gigs. We recently just got, uh, due to yesterday's gig, a uh, new Vibe PH, which, which was the sponsor for yesterday's gig, just got us to be part of their regular gig rosters. So I think we're doing a gig at, uh, on June 23 at Social House. I, I'm not sure, please don't quote me, but uh, if it happens, I know I was told that we were being booked for June 23 Social House. We're, uh, we're planning to do more gigs with New Vibe because uh, they really have a lot of good gigs to do. And uh, I guess it's more writing and more collaborations in the future. Right. <clears throat> so uh, now that, uh, as I said, the things are opening up. So, Rafael, what are you looking forward to? Well, uh, first of all, I'm looking forward for all the live gigs because uh, it gives us a venue to really reach out to a lot of new people. And then secondly, uh, I'm looking forward for uh, releasing new tracks with the band. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> so uh, 
Migs uh, and Ralph, what's your message to the viewers of this uh, video and uh, people who go, who's going to listen to this podcast? You first, Ralph. Uh, yeah, so for everyone out there uh, who, have, who has not yet followed us, please follow us in Spotify and Facebook. Uh, you can just search it as The Mox. It's T-H-E-M-O-X. And uh, yeah, that's all from me. Yeah, to add to what Raf said, again, follow us. Uh, by the way, a little anecdote again. Uh, our old Facebook got hacked and we lost our old page. So if you see the other Mox page, please do not like that. <laughs> our, uh, our page reads as uh, www.facebook.com slash this is the Mox. T H I S I S T H E M O X. It's also the same for our, our Instagram account. Please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, YouTube. Uh, please watch our gigs. Please uh, listen to our songs. And please share, share our songs as much as you can. There's going to be a lot more coming from where that came from. Right. <clears throat> uh, anybody you guys want to shout out to? Uh, Raph, you want to shout out to people? Uh, yeah. Uh, first off, I want to shout out to... Uh, to my girlfriend for always supporting me and in fact she just uh she just went to our she just visited us in our gig last friday mm -hmm. and then the next one i would like to shout out to all my friends and family who are always continually supporting us yeah right smart man <laughs> right he, he greet his girlfriend first <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, guess, I, I guess i have to top that no i have to top what ralph said and uh, I, I, I have to greet my wife first. I, I married by the way. Right. <laughs> so ladies please do not <laughs> um, shout out to my wife who is Raph's cousin. Um, I, I appreciate that she's always supportive of, of these things I do. Uh, of course shout out to my group the new Pinoy Music Collective. We're a group of young musicians. You can follow us on uh, facebook.com slash NPM Collective. We sometimes release collaborative tracks there. But also, if you're a, a young upstart looking to come into the music scene and need help or just need to meet other like-minded musicians, you can send us a message. We'll hook you up. Of course, shout out to other members of the Mox. Justin, please get well soon. We have a gig on June 23 and July too. Please be there. I hope your foot gets well by then because I really miss your drumming skills, man. Of course, shout out to James, who's currently in training MWF right now. They're, they have their Sunday training every week. Please be the best referee you can be. Um, shout out to Mad Generic, Kokoy Dulce, and Luigi Lim. Uh, last night's gig at RJ Bistro was the bomb. Please expect a lot of good videos. And eventually, I hope you can also guess Mad Generic here. You know, it'll be fun to hear the other side of the coin. And what yeah. they think about about things. Uh, again, shout out to friends and family, of course. Shout out to Smart Henry, of course. That my wrestling guys, uh, my wrestling guys are always supporting the band. By the way, I don't think I mentioned this, but the Mox name came from you know one of my favorite wrestlers, John Moxley. So shout out to my wrestling guys <laughs> there. Um, uh, who else? Shout out to uh, New Vibe PH who's constantly supporting us. Um, shout out to my good friend, Mr. Johan Panchanko of uh, Thoughts and Notions. We're uh, currently cooking, out, uh, cooking up a big record label thing. So we're trying to start something big and I'm going to, I'm probably going to be a big part of his new business venture. Um, and shout out to a lot of our supporters. You know who you are. Rock on, guys. Uh, yeah, I think that's everybody. If I missed anybody else, I am so sorry. I love you guys. And, and I appreciate everybody. Yeah, I, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure you, you miss somebody. That's, that always happens, right? <laughs> <laughs> People from Antipolo, I love you, my friends from the office. Right. So, so Mix, Ralph, uh, Thanks for joining the podcast. I really enjoy talking to you guys. And uh, I, I, I would like to say that I love the energy and the positivity and, you know, your attitude towards, you know, getting the show must go on, right? Like you yeah. have that attitude. 
and I'm yeah. really looking forward to the full length album. And hopefully, I can see you guys live uh, in, yeah. in one of these gigs. Uh, hopefully, try to catch us at Social House. Uh, we'll, we'll have a poster soon, so hopefully, maybe there. If not there, there'll be a lot more. You'll see a lot more of the mocks in the coming months, definitely, and I can be sure of that. Yeah. So, Mix uh, Ralph, thanks for joining and uh, drive safe. <laughs> thanks, man. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.